What's going on guys? I'm known player here and today once again we've got a variety of several topics to discuss inside this video. So I wanted to talk about what is most likely to be the new light level available inside the Warmind DLC coming out in a few weeks and also to talk about how light level and power level and the entire leveling system is actually going to be changing in a pretty big way when the DLC comes out. On top of that there is a new exotic item of course available from the Nightfall as the strike specific loot. I want to talk about if it's worth going for, if it's any good and what it's about. There's also a very strange thing that Bungie kind of updated and changed inside the tower which is sort of a mystery related to the DLC that was actually solved. And of course, on top of that, we'll be talking about things like the September DLC, an upgraded exotic, and even the Iron Banner 6v6, which is of course live right now for the rest of the week. So like I said, a variety of topics rounded up inside this one video for you guys. Of course, if you want to support the channel, a like rating down below would be much appreciated. And let's jump into it. So I wanted to begin with something really strange that was actually changed by Bungie inside the tower. It's something a few of you guys have asked me about on Twitter and in my comments. I actually did a bit of research and figured out what's going on here. So of course, inside the tower, I'm sure you guys are well aware there's a secret room up here just over the future walkout room and through this little ventilation there's kind of a projector with the Daito logo that's like a foundry but of course on the table there used to be a scannable here Anna Bray's journal which you could scan and it would tell you about how Anna Bray and someone's kind of like trying to hide her secrets and stuff like that but as a few of you have noticed there is no law scannable here anymore it's completely gone Anna Bray's journal has literally disappeared now even the journal itself was most likely related to the Warmind DLC it's of course kind of hinting and teasing that she's involved and kind of about doing something or maybe one of her relatives or her sister I think she's supposed to be technically dead but we don't know if she's alive or not but either way there was a scannable right here in the secret room that Bungie only a few weeks ago actually removed. So a lot of people have been thinking is this related to the DLC? Has someone taken the journal? Is it supposed to be some kind of like Easter egg leading up to the DLC? So what's actually happened is that the journal wasn't removed. It was actually just moved to somewhere else very close by. It's actually just through this little ventilation system and it's right down here. That is the journal in that little corner there. So if I investigate you can see it's the same thing. Same text. Nothing's changed as far as I'm aware. So it now kind of begs the question and again some of you have asked why have they moved the journal? It's super weird. It must be DLC related. It must be some kind of teaser or like Easter egg or hint towards something happening. So I actually found the reason why it was moved and DMG, one of the Bungie community managers, was replying to someone about a bug and kind of shed some light on this. So someone was talking about a few bugs that got fixed in a recent update and then DMG replied saying it's very difficult to issue and identify fixes and this is in response to the tower black screen bug and he said frankly a law scannable was duplicating in the tower when transitioning between the courtyard and the hangar eating up memory and obviously we are right in between the courtyard and the hangar so this is the scannable he's talking about. Obviously you guys are well aware of the tower black screen bug where you just load into the tower and nothing would be on screen. You can hear stuff, but you can't actually see anything. So that bug that was plaguing us for like seven months was literally because of Anna Bray's journal duplicating and eating up memory and basically causing the game to crash. It is obviously a very, very strange coincidence because obviously it's the scannable relating to the next DLC that just so happens to get moved right before it comes out. Definitely a very strange thing, but for those who ask me why the journal was moved, then hopefully that answers your question. So moving on the new exotic item, which is this week's Nightfall Strike specific loot. Is it any good? Should I get it? Is it a decent item? Not going to beat around the bush or sugarcoat it. The answer is basically no, it's not that good. So you can see some gameplay footage of it here when we did the run. More console got it first time so he actually got pretty lucky. He actually did 20 nightfalls last week to try and get the DFA but didn't get it once. And then when it comes to a sparrow he got it first time so his RNG is not the greatest to be honest. The main thing that's disappointing about this is that it doesn't have a cool looking trail that comes out the back of it. Like literally every single exotic sparrow in the game has some fancy looking trail that kind of shoots out and looks different. Whereas this thing I was expecting some green fancy looking one but it's literally the same thing you'd see on like a rare sparrow. And the perks are the same. It's nothing special. I believe it's random rolls so you can get different options but they're just sparrow perks really. To be fair on the other hand this week's nightfall is probably one of the most fun and also the easiest nightfall in the entire game. It is so ridiculously easy. I did it on like 10 handicap and got 100,000 score. So it is a very fun and easy nightfall to do but unfortunately the reward is just not that exciting. Just like the ghost shell the other week everything you get in Eververse is way better than this thing so not really worth a grind. But there you go as always my honest impressions on the nightfall strike loot if it's any good or not. Last week I was singing the DFA's praises because it is such an amazing weapon but this week not so much. So next up let's take a look at an exotic we're just getting a very, very massive upgrade in the May update. As we know, there are a ton of exotics that are getting buffed in crazy ways and their perks completely overhauled. And the Graviton Lance is one of them. We heard it's going to have some kind of tracking, seeking void projectiles. But now we can see it in action right here. This is some early gameplay from Bungie. They tweeted it out and said, Space and time weaponized for destruction. A preview exotic weapon changes coming in Season 3. So as you can see, this thing looks just completely ridiculous. It looks absolutely unbelievable. But as you can see, it's kind of like a fusion between the Nothing Manacles Warlock Grenade and also the Axiom Bolt which of course seek people. So what's happening is every time he gets a kill, the enemy that he shot actually turns into a void explosion and that explosion releases more little void projectiles. They seek other enemies, they explode, they all produce projectiles. It's kind of like a chain reaction. I think the impressive thing is that there's even a captain in there with a blue arc shield and he gets killed by it as well. So it's not just low level dregs. There's actually some decently leveled enemies here, but they all just get destroyed. So next up, we're going to talk about the light level or power level, whatever you want to call it, and how it's going to change with the DLC. So the first thing is something that's actually been in the game since Curse of Osiris came out, but hard 
hardly anyone notices because it is very kind of subtle and hard to notice. But if you actually read the description of the infusion button, it does say the maximum power level this item can be infused to is 360. So I have seen a ton of you guys ask me, is this a bug? Is it supposed to say that? Why does it say that? Before that launch, this number actually said 350. It said the max level was 350. And that's why a lot of us assume that was the actual max level because it said that in game. But obviously it turned out the max level was 305 or 300 without mods. So then in December, it changed from 350 to 360. Now my best guess as to why Bungie did this is simply because this is the max level of basically this version or this year of the entire game. So it's safe to assume in DLC 2, Warmind, the max level is going to be 360 or 365. And obviously we can't confirm it 100% for sure. Bungie might change their mind or do whatever because a lot has changed since December. But it's just a very safe assumption. DLC 1 and 2 are the same price, the same kind of content packages. If one DLC raises it by 30 levels, you can probably assume the other one is also going to raise it by 30 levels. Plus it says right here. So it all kind of matches up. Now on the topic of power levels, something is also going to be changing inside DLC is how the level system works in relation to enemies. So Bungie said they're extending the outgoing and incoming damage scaling from capping at a 40 power level delta to a 50 power level delta. So currently the scaling only affects enemies that are up to 40 power levels above you, whereas now it's going to scale up to 50 power levels above you or light levels basically. So it kind of works both ways. If you're below light level, you're going to get destroyed a lot more often. But also if you're above light level, you're going to do a lot more damage now, which I guess is a good thing because most of us most of the time are at max light level. So it doesn't really make a difference. If anything, it's a buff to us. They said when enemies are 50 power levels or light levels above you, they're going to be immune and display the question mark icons and won't take damage. Now, there's also some changes happening to the matching of elements and shields. So with this update, if you match the element of your weapon to the enemy shield, you're going to get three times damage plus the shield explosion detonation thing. If you have a non-matching weapon, so say a solar weapon on an arc shield, you're going to get roughly two times damage. Or if you use a kinetic weapon, it's going to have no damage multiplier. And this, of course, is to further incentivize matching the same shield and kind of using the right weapon. Now, there was also something stuck into the latest Bungie blog post relating to your September DLC. So Bungie are once again doing this charity event where you can donate, you get incentives. In each tier that you donate to this charity, of course, get rewards in return. Now, for the $50 reward is receive an unannounced new exclusive emblem in the fall of our next DLC comic release. So obviously, we know there is a large expansion coming inside the fall. That's not a secret. They've said it before. Now, the interesting thing is they do call this DLC a comic release, which some of you might not recognize. It's basically something where they overhaul the entire game. It's basically a re-release of the game with all the DLCs, updates, and of course, the DLC itself. So some of you OG players might remember back in the day, there was a leaked screenshot which showed the entire roadmap of Destiny. So the original plan for Destiny, it's also in the contract as well, is for Destiny 1 to release, and there's DLC 1, DLC 2, and then a Comet release, which was Taken King. And that's when they bundled Destiny of the game, DLC 1, DLC 2, all the updates, and of course, Taken King into one re-release. And that is what Comet is. So it's different from Rise of Iron or any other expansion we got. And Rise of Iron was not a Comet DLC. It was actually just a big expansion. So it is good news they're calling it a Comet because we know it's not going to be another Curse of Osiris, not going to be a small DLC or even Rise of Iron. It is going to be the same size and same content as Taken King, a very big, large kind of overhauling expansion. It is obviously a way for them to make more sales and make more money as a company, but that is what a Comet expansion is. So of course, also this week is Iron Banner 6 v6. It was delayed last week because there was a bug. I believe it was sending people to orbit. So I guess you just couldn't play. And that's why we got, where is the guy? That is why we got six man rumble. So comment down below. What do you guys think of Iron Banner? Are you liking it? Are you not liking it? Honestly, to me, I'm actually probably going to die. I'm actually a big fan of this Iron Banner. I was a little bit worried because Bungie were making it seem a little bit like it might be similar to eight man rumble. Just an absolute mess of people everywhere and spawns being awful. I was kind of preparing myself for this to be not that fun. But honestly, I love this. Like it's not perfect. It's definitely not the best version of Crucible ever. I feel like the kill times could probably be a little bit lower because six people bumbling around everywhere taking a year to kill each other is a little bit awkward. That's why I'm using the Vigilance Wing because this weapon is the quickest kill time in the game. That's a golden gun. Nope. But this feels pretty much like Destiny 1. This feels like... Let me go ahead and pop this. Oh no, that's a storm. Can I kill this? I can. I can kill this. Yeah, I'm gonna die. Yeah, there's no chance. There is. Yep. Yeah, a lot of people were saying the spawns are really bad, but honestly, in my experience, I was the first one to say the spawns in Rumble were bad, but I don't know, maybe I've got good lobbies. I've been lucky. I played for a few hours today, but the spawns in my experience haven't been too bad. I haven't been spawn killed that often. These hunters like to jump a lot, but I like to punch a lot. But in my experience, well, that's not an enemy grenade. But either way, bottom line, I'm a fan of it. I'm a big fan of this. I love this mode. I wish it was permanent. I'm wondering when Bungie or if he's got a tractor cannon. What? I haven't seen that in like ever. He has a sword. Where are these guys getting heavy from? He has a tractor cannon too. Why does everyone have a tractor? These guys just like tractor cannon squad. I feel like one of the biggest reasons why 6v6 is so much better for Destiny 2 than 4v4 is this Titan is just running away from me and I'm a hunter, so I'm really slow. 
And he's probably gonna punch me. Not to punch him first. I think the main reason why 6v6 works so much better is because simply the anonymity, people being able to kind of just kind of be around the map and not be noticed as easily. Like when it's only 4v4, there's obviously less people on the map and it's easier to track people and kind of take note. And you doing something by yourself, you get noticed a lot more easy. There's a lot less going on. So if you're doing something, shooting people or trying to sneak around, you get noticed. Okay, I love I love damaging three people and getting no kills. It's hard to explain exactly, but what I'm trying to say is that in 6v6, there's a lot more people on the map, a lot more going on. So you can get away with a lot more. You can kind of sneak around. You can have 1v1 gunfights. You can challenge people. But when it comes to 4v4, it's closer to skirmish where everyone is kind of like sticking together. It's a lot more tactical and a lot more competitive because of it. Hopefully my ramblings make some sense to you guys. I'm not sure if it did, but what I'm trying to say is a 6v6 is a lot of fun. But I believe that is going to do it for this video. As always, I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, a like rating would be massively appreciated. I'm actually flying to America to, of course, visit Bungie Studios in literally a few hours. So there may be a few less videos than you're used to. But while I'm out there, I am, of course, going to be recording some new DLC 2 gameplay for you guys. So there should be a ton more videos after the trip. And I'm obviously looking forward to just talking to Bungie and giving feedback and giving your guys feedback what you've said. I have read all of your thousands and thousands of comments. So everything you've said to me on Twitter or YouTube or anywhere else. But yeah, like I said, starting next week with a trailer and early gameplay and announcements there's gonna be a lot to cover so of course if you aren't already make sure you are subscribed in the meantime if you want to watch a video i made recently talking about dlc 2 random roles are confirmed then september dlc and all kinds of stuff click the image on screen right now to be taken to it but as always i massively do appreciate all of your support you guys are awesome and i'll see you guys in the next one